because you'll never get a really hard edge like that in nature. That's just unnatural, unrealistic. Uh, so we're going to change the, we're going to improve the carpet and we're going to do something about this wall section that's uh, beside the step. So let's jump, uh, before we jump in, I'm going to do a save all because I turn auto save off. Uh, Sniper Echo says another project. Are we really there already? Feels like we just started this one. <laughs> you think? We've been going at this for months. Although, like I said, 3D takes a long time, but yeah, this one's been going for months. Um, and we still do have a bit, a bit to do here yet. But yeah, I want to get, it's got to be done before Christmas. We've got to move on to something else, at least around the, at Christmas time, uh, which is what we're going to be doing. <laughs> we will. I am determined to get it done. Not that I don't like working on it. I love work, working on anything in 3D. And uh, I, what I really like about game engines, particularly the Unreal Engine, is the fact that it's uh, real time. You place something and you can actually look at it in real time, as opposed to uh, when you do renders like uh, ArchViz, you've got to wait for it to render out. Christmas Day stream. Oh, I don't know about that. I, I, I go uh, interstate for Christmas, remember, like last year. I visit my family because they're all up in Queensland and I'm in... Melbourne, down the bottom of Australia, and they're all up the top end. Uh, my sister, I usually visit my sister and my brother because um, they have the big family thing where they've got, you know, three kids each and they like to put do the whole Christmas thing. So I, I usually go up there for Christmas and the New Year. We'll see how we go. <laughs> uh, but I do want to pick, do something with this sidewall. So. I have already done it, Max, again, so you guys didn't have to sit around watching me uh, stuff around too much. Uh, I'm going to bring this panelling in, <laughs> and I'm going to bring the new uh, carpet in. And again, if I pull in here on the carpet, you can see that I've, I've softened up the edges of these carpets, so it's, it's not that hard edge that we were seeing before. Uh, but let's start with the panelling. Uh, now. What I'm doing here is I'm not going to be taking this into Substance Painted Paint It. I want to try and save as many polys as I can in the game engine. So I'm going to be reusing a lot of the texturing we've already done for our skylight. Uh, it, like I said, it'll save uh, us on texture memory and also time having to re-texture a specific uh, asset. So what I'm going to do here though is I'm going to uh, attach all these pieces together. Just the panelling part that is. Going to undo that. I don't know why it changed my material ID there. I'm, so I'm just going to uh, leave that top bit for a minute. No. See, Max can sometimes get really confused. I've noticed this before. Uh, I'm going to do a uh, reset on the X form. What's happening here is when I'm doing my attach, Max is um, not keeping my material IDs. And if Max doesn't keep my material IDs, it's going to create a problem when I bring it into Unreal. Hobo Supreme, uh, really enjoyed the stream and thanks for the advice again, Phil. Seeing your work, uh, seeing you work hard at it makes me work hard at it as well. So going to do that. Well, thank you very much, uh, Hobo Supreme, for being here and for the follow as well. I do appreciate it. I'm, I'm, my schedule doesn't change. I'm every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. Uh, Wednesday's not at the moment, but I'll be going back to Wednesday soon. But certainly every Monday and Tuesday. Remember, you can follow me at PhilDoes3D on Twitter if you're not sure, but my schedule doesn't change. <laughs> uh, but I always post to Twitter when I go live. Uh, and again, thanks for being here. And um, yeah, pop back and let me know if you have any problems or anything, any questions. I'm always here and happy to help. So thanks again for being here. Um, we're going to do a reset on the X form here. Should we do a reset? Let's do it again anyway. No, we didn't. Uh, yeah, Max can sometimes be, if you're a Max user, can be a bit fiddly here with the material ID assignments. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try attaching other pieces before I attach the main piece. My mouse is playing up. Uh, 
Now you see we've had that problem again. Oi. Alright, let's do it this one and this one because they're using the same material. Uh, now, I think the problem here, can, it can sometimes be the naming of materials as well. Max can get a bit confused that way. So I'm going to open up my material editor. Um, I, I know that red material is this one, but I'll do a pick to make sure. All right, let's just move these out of the way. Uh, now this is, this is interesting, it's using a multi-material, even though I know that only uses one material, so I'm going to um, I'm going to remove these I'm going to assign that material that I know it uses there Large column dark, we'll leave it called that. I'm going to select this uh, second piece and grab it. What are you doing? Uh, giving me a bit of a problem here with the picking for some reason. Close down the material editor for a minute. Why aren't you selecting? Let's try this again. Uh, let's start with these and try doing an attach to the frame. No, that is not right. All right, let's try doing a grouping and bringing it as a, as a group into uh, Unreal. I actually haven't done that before with Unreal, so it, I'm not sure how it handles groups. We will find out. Um, so let's group it. I'm going to call it. My mouth is really playing up. Very sluggish for some reason. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, um, Max isn't having problems again. Could be my mouse though. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's call this um, stairwell wall up up. I want to do one below as well. And let's export that. We'll make a new folder for it. Stairwell walls. Okay. Let's jump back into Unreal and uh, let's import that.
Yeah, I was afraid it was going to do this. It separated them all up. Uh, um, it's actually, we need to do a reset as well because it's uh, affecting our direction here, our angle. Um, whether they're separate or together it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, it would have been more handy if they were all together. It would have been easier for me to move, but I can always create a blueprint. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, just open up our group. Uh, again, we're going to make sure our pivot is in the middle and reset the X form. Doesn't like me doing a reset on the X form in a group. Okay. Let's ungroup it. Collapse it. Reset the X form and collapse it. Let's regroup it. And let's re export it. Re-import these pieces again. All right. I think the first thing we'll do here is we will uh, make a blueprint so that uh, everything fits together. separate gives us a bit more movement if we want to uh, make any small adjustments once we place it in the level anyway so it's not a big deal just in case there's some small I don't know, change we want to make in in the grouping of it having it all separate allows us to do that and let's bring in these Before I create a blueprint group here, I'm going to um, just uh, copy our textures over. So I know for this one I need to copy texture from here. And I believe it'll be this one. For this one, uh, I 
believe this one was I don't think it's this one but we'll see yeah, this one will work for us Uh, and doing this I don't have to reset up new materials and like I said I can reuse the um, the textures we've already created so and this one will be uh, two and three I believe it's this one here I just need to copy, uh, swap out the textures there as well, so I need to open up this one. And this one. And then we can save it. Alright, now let's, um, just select them all so we can create a blueprint. Select a components to blueprint, blah, blueprint class and we're going to call it, um, we'll call this one stairwell walls upper underscore prefab for a prefab and place it in a blueprint folder. Where are we? Uh, looks like I didn't select the um, the back face. All right. Silly me. There we go. <laughs> now let's create our blueprint again. Uh, stairwell walls upper prefab we'll call it prefab too so we don't get confused there we go all right let's uh, place our prefab we're gonna have to scale it up a little bit I think So again, I'm just going to copy the scale value we use for these ones, which is here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have to scale it up. Let's rotate it uh, 90 degrees. And let's pull it down so it's sitting behind our whoop, our stairs then. Looking at it here so I can get a judge how high the thing has to go.
Bradley DM. You wish you were doing what I was doing? <laughs> well, there's no reason you can't. Trade your jobs. <laughs> this is, um, yeah, well, anybody, anyone can do 3D. It's not anything special. Um, I encourage everyone to do 3D. It just takes practice, that's all. So um, if you want to be a 3D guy, then yeah, just play around with some 3D uh, software until you get something made and yeah, go from there. Change jobs then if you want. Uh, yeah, it just takes time and persistence. <laughs> So do you want to do you want to do 3D, Bradley? Uh, Bradley, been getting been getting nothing but uh, optimization and retypo work, uh, retopology re work this past week. Mind telling. <laughs> so you are into 3D already. Yeah, retopology that can be a bit of a pain. I have to admit. I'd say that the um, as far as 3D work goes, the least favourite of mine are doing retopology and doing UV mapping. Those two things are just, you know, as far as the, the gamut of 3D goes, the least fun. Everything 3D is fun, but they're the least fun. And thankfully I don't work on characters, so doing retopology on characters is a pain in the ass. So I feel for you. I'm gonna make sure my little my little piece here is sitting correctly. Uh, okay, we're on the top step. That's fine. That's that's weird. Why is it like that? I guess I can bring it forward. We have a bit of a problem here with our um, plaster panelling as well. So you're a 3D guy as well, Bradley. Do you specialise in anything particular? Are you um, environment, character? And Bradley says the mesh I'm fixing here apparently went through some uh, automated tool that busted its initial UVs and uh, rebaked the data all over the sheet. So you've got to make an 80% reduction while maintaining the original texture sheets. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, actually, speaking about that, you know, uh, again, I don't know what you're working on, but for hard surface stuff, um, I've just, Microsoft bought Simply Gone, and that, that they do poly reduction. It's an automated, uh, automated tool for poly reduction. Um, if I just jump into uh, Edge here and we go to the Simply Gone Studios website, uh, now, Simply Gone was it was uh, incorporated into UE UDK. Uh, Epic used to use it all the time. Oh, you, you went through. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you think it went through Simply? Ah, yeah. I was just going to say because uh, Simply Gone they used to charge for their license, but you can actually use it for free now because Microsoft bought bought them. So instead of this $25,000 fee, you can actually install it and use it for free. Um, yeah, Microsoft bought it. Yeah, they bought it at the beginning of the year. Uh, that could be the reason why Epic Games removed it from uh, UE4. I don't know, because uh, Epic have their own lotting system in UE4 now. Uh, Bradley says, yeah, used it on and off. You really like it sometimes and hate it in others. Yeah, it, any of these automated tools, they get, they're either going to do a great job or a crap job, depending on the asset that they're working on, that you're working with. Uh, Bradley says, but uh, in reality, it's always good to have it as another tool. And, but yeah, that's right. Um, I haven't actually installed Simply Gone here myself yet. I did look at it the other day and I just thought I'd mention it on stream for any of you guys that are doing uh, game work because... Uh, for game stuff, it does lotting incredibly well. Uh, you don't have to use it for games though. You can use it for, it, it has a plug-in for Max and for Maya and all that sort of stuff as well that comes free with the free version. 
So you can install the, the free version and plug it into Max and Meyer and uh, it works in Unity. It works in Unreal. Um, so if you're a game guy, certainly have a look at it. If you need to do lotting, you don't want to do it all by hand. Uh, it, and it's good for poly reduction work as well. But as uh, Bradley's saying here, you can have problems uh, with some of these automated tools. Sometimes they don't tend to be the most intelligent of a thing when it comes to actually doing retopology. Uh, that an automated program that is, as, as opposed to a person like Bradley who's having to do it by hand. Uh, so you're always going get, to get a better result doing it by hand, uh, but these programs can be really useful if, you, if you're short of time and you're running to a deadline or something um, to, reach, to uh, reduce the poly count on your objects. And Bradley says one, uh, one thing I like is the fact that uh, is the LODs are really smooth in transition. Yeah, they are. Really smooth in transition. Uh, some auto tools just go with a standard percentage reduction. Yep. Uh, yeah, the LODing in, uh, that Simply Gone does is incredibly smooth. You really don't notice the LOD at all. Uh, whereas sometimes bad LODing, you'll have things pop. Because uh, you can actually, and you can control the amount of LODing at, at what distance as well in Simply Gone. Uh, yeah, no, Simply Gone does, uh, Bradley says Simply Gone seem to have a good algorithm in that respect. They do. Now, I think that's the reason Microsoft bought them. Uh, Simply Gone were renowned for, for their LOD tools. And that's why Epic Games used it in UDK, UE3. Um, so it's a great, it's a great uh, thing to use. And it has its uses. Not, not great for everything, but certainly great for LODing in games. Less important with Unreal because, like I said, uh, Epic Games have actually created their own LOD system now for Unreal 4, for UE4. Um, so, and, and you can control percentages in the LODing in Unreal using Epic's built-in one. But this one certainly has a plugin that comes that you can integrate it with Unreal if you prefer to use Simply Gone's version. And like I said, it, 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 it integrates, you can see here, with uh, Max, Maya, Unity and uh, UE4. So regardless of what game engine you're using, it can come in really handy. Um, and for, for poly reduction too, I, I tend with Max, I, I probably will install Simply Gone because I don't want to play around with it again. Uh, and it's free, so I've got nothing to lose. My only my only caution to you guys, if you do want to install Simply Gone and you do want to use it in UE4, to be careful. Because I've read in some forums online that people are having problems with opening their projects after they try and install the plugin. I think because the plugin needs to be updated for every new version of Unreal released, and I don't know that Simply Gone have updated the plugin yet, so you run the risk if you try and install it in, say, Unreal 4.17, of it corrupting your project, and that's a ma that'll be a major problem then, getting or losing work or something if you don't back it up. Um, so just be careful if you're going to be using it with UE4. Uh, I haven't actually. That's third-party knowledge here. I haven't installed it. I haven't had a problem, um, but I'm just giving you a warning. Uh, GamerArt says, am I on drugs or does that say $25,000? No, you're not on drugs. That does say $25,000. That is the price to buy Simply Gone uh, if you want uh, 10 nodes. So that's 10 nodes for 25 grand a year. Or on one node, which is usually enough for an indie developer, uh, is completely free. And you see it's all royalty free, you don't have to give them any money. Uh, they used to be on a subscription model, Simply Gone, before Microsoft bought them, where you had to give them like a percentage, like uh, like Epic Take if you make a game. What's so special about Simply Gone? Um, well, it, it does lotting well, it does re poly reduction incredibly well. It can bake out the normals on the poly reduced uh, model automatically. Um, Save studios a lot of time because doing retopology is always time consuming and doing uh, UV mapping is time consuming too. Uh, Bradley says, uh, I'm a Unity pleb, but yeah, Simply Gone Asset will toss warnings in Unity after updates as well, yeah. I think because these are all plugins that they always have to be updated every time either Unity or Unreal or Epic Games release a new uh, version of the engine. And I think that's where the problems come in. If they don't update the plug-in, then it creates problems in the engine. Uh, Bradley says that they seem to update their assets in a reasonable time frame, though. Yeah. Epic are the same. Um, like, I use the Substance plug-in in, in UE4. Um, 
and generally the Epic Games will release the new version of the engine and you have to wait maybe a week for uh, Algorithmic to update the plugin. It's usually not too bad. So yeah, that's my only warning with, uh, if you're going to, if you're going to try to use Simply Gone in UE4, just be aware that you may have problems with your projects uh, until the plugin is updated. And I'm not familiar enough with the company, now that Microsoft owned them, they may be better, uh, just how often they update their plugins. But if you're just using it in Max or Maya, then certainly um, you don't have to worry about that. So, and it's free. And you know, you don't have to pay your 25 grand, you can get it for free. <laughs> so long as you're only using one node. Uh, and royalty free, you don't have to give them any money. Uh, so since Microsoft bought them, I think it's because Microsoft are pushing that, with the creators update, they're really pushing um, 3D. You know how they have the new 3D paint program in, um, in Windows 10 now. I think that's the reason Microsoft bought them and are making it free to encourage people to do more 3D stuff. That's my guess anyway. So give it a go. Go to simplygone.com and download the free. You do have to register, which is a pain, which means you're going to need a Microsoft account. Microsoft owned, you're going to need a Microsoft account. But the only other thing to be aware of is you must be on Windows 10 to be able to install the free version. See, runs on Windows 10. Uh, if you're on Windows 7 or 8 or 8.1, it won't work. You must be on Windows 10. Uh, whereas the, the paid version, of course, runs on Windows 8 and 10. But yeah, just be aware of that too. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to ruin anyone's day by saying download it because it's free and you're on Windows 7 and it won't install. So you must be on Windows 10. You must have a, a Microsoft account, which is free, uh, and then you can download and install it for free. Or even just look around. There are a couple of videos on YouTube about using it. Not much though. They haven't released a lot of information on it. Uh, if, if it's something you guys are interested in, I can certainly install it and we can play around with it together on stream. See how it works. I have used it in the past. It is good. Well, like I used it during UDK and it was good then. So I'm sure it'll still be good. Um, anyway, let's get back to our stairs here. Uh, so, but I do feel for you doing retopology by hand, um, Bradley. Making sure it's not sticking through the other side of my wall. Uh, now, it looks like I have a problem though with the um, the plaster panelling. It looks like it's sitting too low into the uh, asset. So, I think what I'll do here is I'm just going to move those plaster pieces up. I'm going to have to make sure I do it on all of them so they all stay the same height. Uh, Game Art says, uh, I wouldn't want a program to automatically reduce anything uh, with your art. You call the shots? Well, there you go. You're always going to get a better... Um, a better result doing it by hand anyway. These automated programs are just there to save you time, the studio time. And they can and they, they can save time and they can they can do a good job on, on some assets, not all. You're always going to get a better result doing it by hand. And like you said, you have complete control over the way it looks by doing it by hand. That is really strange. I'm trying to work out what is going on here. I, f I created this piece specifically for that part of the step. Uh, it shouldn't need uh, non-uniform scaling, but it looks like it may. Just to get the thing to fit in there correctly. Very strange. Like I said, I didn't. Uh, I did create it specifically for that part of the um, of the stairs. But yeah, it's looking like it just needed a bit of uh, a non-uniform scale. Not a big deal, but weird that it needed it because it shouldn't have. It could be because the uh, the fact that we grouped it too, remember? I, I didn't want it grouped. Uh, Bradley says, uh, okay.
Yeah, but, but Bradley makes a really good point there. Uh, and Simply Gone, they did a uh, a uh, presentation that's on YouTube you can watch, where they talk about the pipeline between the um, the creative director, the 3D artist, uh, and then the uh, optimization. Uh, what do they call it? The uh, engine optimizer or something? They call it at the end. And uh, and and how that the the uh, the conflict that can exist between the 3D artist and the engine optimization guy. And that's generally the optimization part that goes back to the 3D artist to be optimized. And the 3D artist is annoyed and, and, and pissed off because the creative director says, I want you to change the model, and which then has to be retopologized and then sent back again through the pipeline. It's a pain. That's why SimpliGon made uh, that program to sort of like simplify that process for them. No, I don't want to do that non-uniform scale. It's uh, sitting on my steps really weird. I'm going to undo that. I wonder if it is because I had to group it in max. I bet it is, you know. I'm going to um, just go into sub-object mode in this prefab and just make some adjustments here. Uh, Bradley says, love the wood panelling you made, really pretty. Oh, thank you. Um, again, I'm, I'm using assets and textures I've already used up here on the skylight. And um, we're doing that so that um, we can reduce our texture memory count as much as possible. So, and it also helps to keep consistent look throughout the level if we reuse the same uh, the same textures and assets again and it saves me time and work so win 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 good all around uh, I think it's actually my grouping here is that's causing the problem to be honest with you guys I think I've done something a little strange with my grouping Again, that gets back to the fact that Max is having a problem with uh, attaching these different assets together as one. That's why I had to group it. I shouldn't have had to group it. I'm just looking at the original here so I can get an idea of what's going on. I don't want to do that. Let's deselect it, reselect it. I'm just trying to work out what's happening here with the step. Epic have done a really great job with uh, this game engine. If we move up here, we can sort of see the reflection of the skylight here and the actual wood panelling. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the reflection capture I'm using here. Um, but Epic Games have really made a nice uh, game engine, for sure. Uh, 
it has to do with the materials as well. It's not just the capture. Like you have to make sure you have um, the right roughness material value um, to get the proper reflection. But yeah, no, they've done a really, really nice, really nice job at um, creating this game engine. They always have UDK. That's why I, I, I made that original, this building originally in UDK six or seven years ago because I really love uh, Epic Games Unreal. <laughs> 